taking this off. It's nice, but when you talk for a while, you get a little warm. Okay. Um, in our last class, we had just made the leap or spoken of the leap from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in relationship to function and position and gifts and the body and um, everybody getting to do something. Well, that's, that's what it's talking about. Anyway, and, but what happened there, and if we, if we follow it because we're just trying to get the context, we see that he brings all that up, and then he says, but there's all these squabbles with people. There's all this stuff, and people are wanting this, and people are wanting to be that, and well, or they're going into self-pity. Well, because I'm not the I, I'm not a seer, or whatever. And um, so then, you know, he, he ends with saying all that stuff, but the last verse of chapter 12 is, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Okay. And he's saying it's all scriptural, it's all of God, but it's, it's not of the generation of Christ if it's just our generation doing that. Okay. So then... Then I ended with this statement, when the perfect appears, and that's all I said, I use that as, when the perfect appears, and we were, we, uh, we get that out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to look at verse 10 and 11 instead of going through all of the parts, because if we go through all the parts, now we did mention last class, you know, well, if I have prophecy, and he's saying, look, you got nothing, you're going, he's saying it's nothing, you're going, it's not nothing. It's in the Bible. It's a position. It's somebody that can give that. And he says, if you don't have love, if you don't have the nature of Christ, it doesn't count for anything. Okay? And if you know all mysteries and all wisdom, so, there, so it's not just talking about people that believe in prophecy or gifts. It's talking about what some call deeper life people. You know, you know all these deep things. You got all this stuff and, and whatever, and you have not loved and da 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 da. It's sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. To who? God. To God. <laughs> the one that counts. Yeah. To the one that counts. All right. <clears throat> so then, um, let's. So then it goes into, you know, love does not do this and does not do that and love does not vaunt itself and you know put itself forward does doesn't keep records of wrongs all this kind of stuff but i'm skipping all of that and going down to the end where it says when the perfect appears because this is all talking about jesus the perfect one the perfection the the thing that the fulfillment within us of all of this, okay? But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. All right, so why did he bring this up? In the context of 13 and in the context of 12, he's saying you're still a child uh, when you're trying to, function and everybody function but nobody's seeking the life of Christ to function through right so I wrote down this my definition childish things equals equals things we fight over <laughs> which could be which could be every great spiritual thing in the Bible except Jesus okay and um, and then he says but when I became a man and my definition of become a man, we'll take a couple of sentences here. Become a man equals no longer you. Why? Because you become part of a man, the new man. See? When you become a man, in other words, Christ formed in you because he goes on to say, listen to what he says right after that. When I became a man, I put away childish things. And, and he'll go on to say, because we're going to read the next few verses in just a second. Um, that you become a man, not you, in your whatever, you know, whatever your, is important to you 
religiously, meaning the things that he mentioned previously, all right? So you don't stay in your, when you, when you become a man or join to the new man, you don't stay in your ministry, you don't stay in your function, you don't stay in your position. What, what do you mean by that? When the perfect appears, it's no longer I but Christ. I mean, it really has to be that or it's still um, the ills of carnal Christianity. The problem isn't the gifts, though. The problem is the people yeah. and them wanting to be or have more gifts. You know, like I said, I, I, I function in 12 gifts of the spirit. There aren't 12. Well, I've got them, you know. <laughs> you know I mean, I've heard people you know, bragging on, well, I function in all nine gifts of the Spirit. I have, I've I had someone say that to me to impress me. <laughs> Wrong person. But anyway, <laughs> I was impressed all right, but... Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so when the perfect appears, it's no longer I. Okay, now it doesn't mean you don't have a ministry. It doesn't mean you don't have a position. It doesn't mean those things. It means it's no longer you that's carrying them out. It's his spirit. It's his nature. Love doesn't vaunt itself, okay? But, but human nature does. So that same shell called a ministry or a position is dependent on who steps inside that shell, to live it out. And if it's somebody that is not of the generation of Christ, number one, again, just a reminder from, from Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, then you're not of that generation and you've stepped outside of the line and Christ is no longer coming forth. Once you step outside of that line, Jesus way down here is not going to come forth because you stepped out of the line. Okay? Okay. Well, that's, that's the importance of the body right there. Keeping it pure, baby. <laughs> Keeping the line pure. Amen? Keeping it pure. Amen. Keeping it real. Anyway. Um, okay, so now let's look at verse 12. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see in a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part then shall I know, even as I am known. Okay? Even as also I am known. Okay. So he says darkly. We see through a glass darkly. Um, I looked that up, and it said uh, we see in riddles. We see in obscure form. Not the form of Christ, but it's obscure. It's not clear. And then that we know in part, okay? We know in part, which is the next words right after. Now I know in part. So the Lord took me to Hebrews chapter one and, uh, and verse one through three. And it says this, God, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Okay, there you go, 1 Corinthians 12, right? And 1 Corinthians 13, if you can speak, you know, you know prophecies and you can da-da-da-da and have not love, then it is nothing. It's, okay. Verse 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, and we know that that is actually in Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty of on high. Did you notice how much of that had to do with Jesus being the brightness, the fullness, the, the greatness? The, it's not beating around the bush, you know? And it's not allowing us to sneak in ourselves, right. you know, and to interject ourselves where it should be Christ. And he's, you know, the, whoever wrote, you know, most people say that Paul wrote Hebrews. I don't know. It doesn't say, and, and I don't think it's clear who wrote it. But whoever wrote it 
made an incredible stand in that book for Christ. You know, I was going to say some things, so I must skip that. All right, so it mentions diverse manners, uh, sundry times in diverse manners. I thought it was interesting. I looked that up, and it said diverse manners actually is translated pieces and fragments. You knew that one, huh? Yeah, that's what it says. Pieces and fragments. Well, I don't know. Just think about it. The, the daggers in your eyes can't kill me. But the thing in your heart can. Anyway, never mind. <clears throat> um, I, didn't, I didn't make that meaning up. That's actually what it means. Um, and it means that nothing was the full picture in Times past. Okay, so let's just, times past is old, old covenant, Old Testament. Everything they spoke, whether it was, and what a great book to, to say this in. Um, when he spoke of the tabernacle, he, you know, in the Old Testament, it's, this is a house for God. This is da 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 da. This is, you know, all uh, habitation, all this kind of stuff. And in the New Testament, it comes along and it says, you're the temple and he's supposed to dwell in you, which is again the fullness of what God had in mind. Not being prophets, not having gifts, not functioning in positions. Well, we're the priest. The, Jesus is the high priest and of a whole new priesthood after the order of Melchizedek and whatever went before was in Fragments and pieces. It was little shadows. It was thoughts. It was pointing to Jesus. Amen? Amen? It was all pointing to Jesus. So it was fragmentary. Right? But when that which is perfect has come, when the perfect is revealed, it's no longer fragments. And that's what he's saying here. God is undetermined through fragments and this and that. Did this. Okay. Okay, so we are also on a theme that has to do with gather up the fragments, right? All right. Um, so what does that mean? Okay, well, that can mean go back and, and study everything that was shared during the sixth year, right? Yeah, that's right. Go back and study everything that was shared during the sixth year, which is fine, which is I have no qualms with that. Because that's what we should do anyway, right? I mean, that's what we should do anyway. Um, but it's not saying gather up fragments. It's go to the go to the things that were shared and find him, the him who's the perfect one, isn't it? I mean, we don't want to just look at fragments. And go, oh, that was really good. And remember, you know. Remember the time Randy said so and so, you know, you know, oh, thank you, Lord, for what he shared then or something stupid like that. I mean, you know, it's about him. And it is, and in one little fragment, you can see the fullness. It's like your DNA or your, your one molecule. It's all, the fullness is there. And we can find him who, who is the perfect one. And he can come. <laughs> you know, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part or fragmentary shall be done away. All right. So there's n there is no way in the sixth year <laughs> that, that I or all of us who preached could have shared all fullness that is Christ during that year. There ain't no way, baby. There ain't no way. It couldn't happen. But within that, the Spirit of God can reveal the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Okay. So, I mean, so you better believe that I'm, I'm not promoting just going back and studying anything I shared as if that's what we're supposed to do. Because I know that the Spirit of God is saying, yeah, okay, go, go back, get what was shared in the sixth year, and open your heart and say, Lord, 
or Holy Spirit, let me see him who is, who is, uh, um, who, uh, let me get it here, uh, who, who being the bright, let me see him who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, not the power of his word, the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Fill me with that, Lord Jesus. Be fill, come in, come in. You know, open wide ye everlasting gates and let the king of glory come in, not come back. Not come back. Didn't say let him come back. It said let him come in. And to give him that place. And that's our hearts. That's what we exist for. That, that's why those guys were in that lineage. And that's the only reason why anybody would ever come to this church and stay for any length of time. Because they want the Lord. They want the Lord. And sure, sure, this isn't just lowly Bethlehem, old Bethlehem, thou who art small among the cities of Jerusalem. This is, this is, the, the, this is the cattle barn. This is the stalls. This church is the, it's not just Bethlehem or the inn, it's, it's the stalls. And this is where we can find Jesus. And if you know that, and if that song sings in your heart, then, then it, what a glory. You know, the angels came around there and sang, you know? You know, it's like, they don't go, I don't know, man, I can't. There's something stinks around here. <laughs> something stinks around here. I don't know. I don't want to spread that around because I don't want to discourage anybody, but something stinks around here. Um, how about... Something is a beautiful fragrance to God, even if it smells like horse manure to you. <laughs> Woo you glad I came tonight? <laughs> Woo! Okay, let me... <laughs> Praise God. It's about Him. And it's about our hearts pursuing Him with all of our heart and all of our soul. I mean, the first commandment is nothing more than him saying, this is what I'd like you to do. You know, you go, well, there's all these other commandments. Let's start with this one. And they said, that, well, they said to Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? He said, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and strength. And so it's like, Okay, I'm up for that, Jesus. I'm with you. I love you, and I'm going after you, and nothing's going to stop my heart from going after the Lord. See, nothing's going to get in the way of that. Not because things won't try. Things try all the time. But the truth is, they cannot stop you. They cannot... Only you can be affected by them. And, and uh, Cassie's not on there, is she? She's watching the game. Aren't she? Yeah. Oh, I can't say this because I don't have her permission. <laughs> Glory to God. But thank you, Lord, for that, what it was I was thinking about. <laughs> um, so... Uh, this scripture, it says he was, Jesus is the express image. How much time we got? Did I run over? One minute. Okay. He's the, he's the expressed image, and that's the image that God wants us conformed to. Yes. Okay? But it's not just a, a, a theological image or a doctrinal image or a knowing of deep things. We really should dump that as our righteousness. And just make Jesus our righteousness. Not based on how much you know, but on knowing him and loving him. And saying, Lord, I'm after you. If I'm the dumbest sheep in the, in the, in the barn, I'm still your, your sheep. You know, I'm still your sheep. And when the time comes, I want to be chosen. Because many are called, but few are chosen. You know, because that sheep was chosen to go to the altar. 
See, a lot of people called, hey, come on, and go, oh, you know, little lamb is running out to the good shepherd. Oh, he called me, I'm called. He goes, well, it's going to be a day when I'm going to choose you. <gasps> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, well, few are chosen because few will, will go on to that altar. Have you ever read that scripture in, what is it, Psalms? It talks about being a backsliding heifer. Do you know what backsliding is? Backsliding isn't, well, I was a Christian and I was really doing good. It's trying to get you to the altar and you're going like this and you're fighting against the priest taking you to that altar. <laughs> so, I think I'm almost done here. Um, so, I just put... The answer is not salvation, because all that are called are saved. Amen? Amen? They've been called unto salvation. But it is seeing face to face, and that's what he said in 1 Corinthians 13, 10 and 11. Seeing face to face and then I will know myself as I am known. You will know yourself as you are known. That's, what, that's right there in 1 Corinthians 13, the very end. He didn't say you will know Jesus there. He said you will know yourself differently than what you know yourself presently. And he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about when the perfect one appears, when the perfect appears. Then when he appears, then you understand who you are because you're one with him. So whatever he is, you know, whatever, you know, we talk about being the body or whatever, it doesn't matter what part you are as long as Jesus lives in that part. Is that right or wrong? My God, you know. Well, I wouldn't want to be the big toe or the little toe. It's just funky looking. Or worse. Let me see what I could say about it. No, it's, <laughs> it's time to quit. How about we pray? Father, we just so much love, love your son. We love that the... Even the genealogy there is not just a genealogy. It is declaring Christ. It is declaring the coming forth of Christ. It is declaring the purpose in your heart is that Christ would come forth as a result of all of us being in tune with that flow until it happens. And Father, I just thank you that your spirit hovers over us and moves within us to draw out our hearts to respond to do to hit that cord that cord that golden cord that rings within our being and we say yes lord yes lord yes lord and father that it not be religiously done that it not be the same old same old not the same old same old for your sake not the same old, same old. But Lord, that we rise to this, this occasion and we run to you. We run to that tomb to find the truth of death and life out of death and reality, even as Peter and John ran there when they heard, Father. And, and we just ask you to continue to um, stir us, but beyond stirring, but stir us uh, to realize that if, this doesn't continue, it can't stay the same. It's either going to pick up momentum or it's going to slow down and die. And to realize that you, the death that it would die would not be the one out of which resurrection comes. But there is a place at the altar for us in you. And we can go there, and the result of that is that we are part not just of the body of your death, but of the body of your resurrection. We are part of that lamb on the throne. 
Hallelujah. And the people, Lord, and, and that's why they were worshiping, Lord. They were worshiping you as lamb on the th slaughtered lamb on the throne, not as great king that saved them from every trial and every hurt. And, you know, uh, they just saw you for the beauty that you, you bear in your being, that you are, that you are. And we want to know the beauty of, of, of oneness, which I believe the beauty of holiness is really the beauty of oneness. And so, so Holy Spirit, don't let us slip. Don't let us backslide. Don't let us slow down. Don't let us drift. But let us, let us run the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, who for the joy was going through all of the all that he went through to be with you, Father. Hallelujah. We love you. We do. We, we, we here, we on Skype, we in this room, we as part of this church that is not here tonight, we love you, Jesus, and that you stir our hearts just to think about you. We love you, Lord. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, Father. Holy Spirit, Son, in your name, amen.